what really is on these protesters' minds. Well, Mark Moreno found out for himself by, still thinking that, by going into the belly of the beast. And let's just say uh, this thorn to environmentalists discovered something far more beastly and a lot more scary. Look at this. What do you mean you'll dismantle the pipeline? By we will dismantle the pipeline, we would like for by any means necessary for this pipeline to not be built, whether that means strikes by, through workers or by any means necessary, we will at least vocally support. Well, you sound like, when you say any means necessary, I'm, I'm getting images of things blown up and eco-terror. Is that what you're implying? No. I'm saying by any means, if we can get it by Barack Obama stopping it, that'd be spectacular. So you're not endorsing dismantling physically a violation of the law or any kind of eco-terrorism, are you? It depends on the circumstances. So that's not out. It's, in, it's, in, it's a possibility. By any means necessary, we mean by any means necessary. Okay. We would support it. All right, Mark's with us now. Mark, wow. Just wow. Yeah, this was a uh, very typical... Uh, sentiment at this rally. There's anger. And it's not just, these are not just, oh, these are a few uh, disgruntled protesters. The lead NASA global warming scientist has announced it's game over for the climate if we approve the Keystone Pipeline. James Hansen, he was arrested for the third or fourth time this past week protesting the pipeline. He's in, the NASA's lead scientist endorsed a book calling for ridding the world of industrial civilization for blowing up dams and raising cities to the ground and turning off our greenhouse gas machine. NASA's lead global warming scientist was this god, this particular man I interviewed about, about uh, eco-terror and the pipeline, his inspiration to stop the pipeline. So the leaders at NASA, uh, in, you know, I call them NASA's resident ex-con, is inspiring these people to potential acts of eco-terrorism. And they're against all forms of energy, which doesn't make sense because if you have a pipeline, if we're getting oil from democracy in Canada, that's called ethical oil, as opposed to conflict oil, getting it from Nigeria, Venezuela, or the Middle East. It's a very simple choice where we want to get our oil. And the ethical and moral way is to get it from friendly democratic neighbors, not countries with poor human rights. Well, records. you know what's scary that came out in a lot of these interviews and, and a lot of the exchange for doing with that one young, young fellow is that uh, the end justifies the means, and if push came to shove, and it, it you know it, it, it meant to, you know tearing this thing down or, or doing God knows what, uh, if it meant a world without this oil, uh, it's a better world for it. That gets yeah. to crazy talk. Yes, and it, it's all about, it's not even about not in my backyard so much as they're worried about the extra CO2 that would be emitted in our atmosphere. This is the new, I mean, the same guy, James Hansen, said we only had four years left to save the planet in January 2009. We passed another Mayan calendar deadline. They, they, these people believe in this doomsday prophecy and don't think they won't act. I mean, when I was in the U.S. Senate Environment Committee, uh, we had to deal with eco-terrorism when it came to uh, animal rights. We had to deal with, uh, there's been eco-terrorism when it deals with property rights in, out in Colorado. So it's a very real thing, torching SUVs. This movement, if it gets frustrated, particularly frustrated with a Democratic President, Obama, who's supposed to be their standard bearer, uh, and actually goes ahead and approves the pipeline, they're going to be a lot of angry people, not the least of which is probably the NASA scientist going to jail again, James Hansen. Man, oh man. Uh, you're a brave fellow, Mark, going right into the crowd there, but uh, always good seeing you. Mark Rano in Washington. You, well, who says these 